Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Reven, and welcome to the second episode of my Diamond Goodbye series. In this episode, we're covering the Great Devourer, Bakasura. I know what you're thinking. Why do we need a guide just to hold down left click and push forward? Well, you're right, you probably don't. But I do see some less experienced players making some simple slip ups when playing this relatively easy character. So this is more to straighten those out. Within Smite, Bakasura is an assassin, dealing physical damage and relying on his melee ranged auto attacks. He's primarily a jungler, but you can see some success as an ADC or a solo laner. Uh, if you have enough experience within those roles. The primary focus of this guide, however, will be on the jungle, as playing him in agency is ridiculously janky, uh, but the build and playstyle are almost identical. Let's start at the beginning and discuss his abilities. Baxter's passive, Insatiable Hunger, increases attack and movement speed temporarily for each enemy he kills. This includes minions, buff camps, and it stacks up to three times. Each stack provides 7% attack speed and movement speed for a total of 24 of each at max stacks. Uh, this buff lasts 10 seconds, and when the timer expires, you lose all your stacks at once rather than one by one, meaning you have 10 seconds to kill another minion in order to reset the timer at max stacks. Baxter's first ability is known as Takedown. When Baxter leaps to his ground target location, dealing damage to all enemies in the area, and increases damage they take from all sources by 10% for 3 seconds. This is the ability you would always take level 1, but because before you get a Golden Blade online, this is your only form of AoE damage, and hence your fastest camp clear. Additionally, the bonus damage means you can clear speed even faster as your mid laner's ability will be doing extra damage to the camp. Due to this increase in damage marking your target, takedown can be an effective engage tool. However, it is worth bearing in mind that it is only a form of displacement, and hence is only real escape. Movement speed buff and insatiable hunger can come in helpful sometimes, but takedown is far more consistent than getting you out of those tricky situations. Bakasura's second ability is Eat Minion. Bakasura grabs a minion and just straight up devours the fucker. Feeding on the flesh of the weak heals Bakasura and grants him a protections buff which at max rank is 30 protections, and at all rank, this lasts 10 seconds. Each minion eaten provides a stack for his ultimate regurgitate. Large jungle cam monsters, oracles, and alpha harpies must be at 33% to eat, but will provide two minions towards regurgitate, and up to six minions can be stored for regurgitate. This is the ability you grab at level two, because you hog the back camps, which destroys the two little harpies, it means you can level up straight away into level two, grab each minion, eat the third, and you're on your way to red buff, faster than most other junglers can be. Bakasaur's third ability is Butcher Blades. This ability has two parts. Passively, Bakasura gains physical power up to 30 at max rank. Uh, and when this ability is activated, so he's active, uh, he gains additional true damage on each strike for the duration. This is your main damage ability, the ability you level at level 3 and focus on maxing first. Your entire late game playstyle for Bakasura revolves around this ability. As it is duration based and not focused on the number of autos, it is important to match your attack speed to focus on landing as many autos in the 6 seconds this stim is active. Baxura's ultimate, as I already mentioned, is called Regurgitate. Baxura will regurgitate all the minions consumed by the minions, so it's up to 6. The initial cast of this ability is a ground target where the regurgitated minions will spawn. This area slows for 3 seconds and cripples enemy players, and lasts for 5 seconds. Baxura is stimmed with cone attacks for this 5 second duration, and is CC immune for 1 second while storing up the minions. Uh, the minions spawn deal damage to enemy players, and can be re-eaten using E minions to grant you stacks back onto your ultimate for the next cast. These minions have a lifetime of 8 seconds, which means they last longer than the cripple area and the stim on the auto ranks. I personally believe this ability is worth leveling when you can, um, as the cooldown is reduced with each level, which means, as it's Bakasura's main teamfight presence, having this up as often as possible is valuable to your teamfights. The cone auto attacks paired with golden blades means your damage is massively spread, and the cone autos will apply on hit effects and the true damage from butcher blades. As Bakasura, you are the hyper character. Your playstyle involves getting yourself to level 20 as soon as you possibly can, and then just running down any enemy god in your way. You roam the map faster than most other characters in the game, and can farm up more efficiently than most with Golden Blade. For farming purposes, max the 3 first, putting points into your ultimate wherever possible. I point skip at level 9 to max the Butcher Blades and have 2 points in your ult. What you level next is dependent on how the game's going. If you're snowballing out of control and have the ability to leap on enemy gods, then level the takedown. If you're struggling for farm, or healing, then level 8 minions. You deal an insane amount of single target damage and have stupid potential to just run down targets that can't prevent it. In the early game, this is your attack strategy. Just run down one target with your laning partner and your aim in the late game becomes engage, drop the ult, distribute horrendous amounts of damage throughout the team and leap away. Prioritise those that can't get away and you're likely to burst them down before they can react. Understanding that Bakasura's playstyle is about rapid farming in order to get fed and stick to the weaker enemy gods allows us to build accordingly. As Bakasura, the two items you will build regardless of game, role, whatever. You build Golden Blade and Hasten Katana. Always. Depending on how you handle the early game depends on which one you build first. If you're planning on ganking early, then get Hasten to stick to your targets. If you prefer to farm more than going for the slaughter, 
Grab Golden Blade. This is a huge boon to Baxter's camper and allows you to level up as quickly as possible. Knowing this, for starter items you will take Assassin's Blessing or Hunter's Blessing if you're in the lane and always Katana. In the jungle you take one health pot and a hog and in lane I'd say take a health and two multi. But I don't really play him in the lane so much, um, so I'm not too certain. Uh, you, you see how you fancy the pots. Now here is the important discussion, whether to build boots or just rush the katana tree. In my opinion, you should always build boots. And here's the maths. From katana to golden blade, it's going to cost you 1350 gold at the time of making this video. And to that step up grants you an extra 7% movement speed and 15% attack speed. Yes, you will get the AoE damage on auto attacks granted by the Golden Blade passive, but for just 200 more gold or 250 more gold if you fancy going into Warrior Tappy, which I personally don't, but you can do, it is possible. For 200 more gold, you get an extra 20 physical power, you get 100 mana, 25 attack speed, and 18% movement speed, and you keep 3% movement speed on Katana. Uh, the most important stat here is obviously the movement speed and the attack speed. So you want to get around the map and clear as quickly as possible. So for an extra 200 gold, you're gaining an extra 10% attack speed on Golden Blade and an extra 15% movement speed that you would if you just built Golden Blade. So this is why I suggest going into boots before finishing your katanas. As a result of Butcher Blade, Bakasura utilizes attack speed better than almost any other god in the game. Therefore, effective items are those heavily invested in attack speed. Items like Atalantas and Echival, shout out to my boy Adapting, pulling this out in the SPL, mean you are getting as many autos as possible in the Butcher Blade duration. Uh, chin size is another useful item, especially when teams are building a lot of health. Uh, a common error made by Bakasura players is maxing attack speed and not buying enough penetration. Penetration recently added to Atalanta's bow means that this is less of an issue, but rounding out the build with an executioner or a stone cutting sword will allow you to maximise your damage. Ideally, you want your attack speed sitting on around the 2.35 mark, as you would be overcapping when fully stacked with your passive in the late game, but you'd not like to be stacking it before engagements anyway at this point. Uh, situational items back as well rely on buffing your sustain. Uh, Shogun's Kasari is always the go-to for magical protections, as the passive includes attack speed. Outside of this, you can always go hybrid protections, hide of the urchin and magi is quite a good options for this. Hide of the Urchin provides you with enough tankiness to survive some encounters, while Magi Squad offers the bubble so you don't get trapped trying to leap away. Uh, Assy might also be an option to consider if you feel like your 2 does not heal enough, like same with Serrated Edge, because uh, these provide more consistent lifesteal. Frostbound is another good item to pick up on Bakasura, as it um, provides you a bit more survivability in that health, and also allows you to slow your opponent for a more consistent landing of the auto attacks, that old hasten Frostbound, the, the Frostalis effect. And finally, Bakasura utilises Toxic Blade better than other gods in the game. In games where healing is becoming a nuisance, this can provide an invaluable item choice. In terms of relic choices, I can't imagine a situation where you don't pick up Blink and then Beads. Except for maybe if you fancy picking up Teleport in Solo, like a little bitch. Uh, and finally, people suggest running Bakasura Crit. Uh, I don't tend to recommend this, as Crit is super expensive, and Bakasura utilises attack speed and penetration better than most of the gods, so it feels unnecessary to waste money on Crit. Additionally, I hate relying on RNG to apply consistent damage. Just go for attack speed, go chin size, chunk enemies anyway with butcher blades. There's no need for crit. One last item it's worth mentioning is uh, Berserker's Shield. It's a particularly good pickup. I wouldn't necessarily pick it up in jungle, but if you're in solo, I think it's definitely one of the first items you should be picking up. As far as considering advanced tips of Baxura, they don't really exist. <laughs> Baxura is mainly an easy bit to play, just holding down whatever your auto attack button is and spamming on the greys in the BGS. The intricate part of his kit is maintaining his passive and the bonus protection to meet minion. Just remember to eat a minion before engaging in a fight, as the protections gained can be the difference between life and death. Also having a fully stacked passive can be the difference between escaping and not. Using it offensively can also prove crucial too, as eating a minion for bonus movement speed whilst chasing down the enemy can result in you catching them up to them, instead of them escaping. And finally, your ultimate provides an invaluable second of CC immunity whilst speaking the minions back up, so remember to use it wisely. Now to the section of the video where we consider Bakasura's matchups, what he does well into and what he doesn't do so well into. What he does well into is tanks. He slays tanks dead with a combination of the true damage, which can't be mitigated, and chin size procs, which will drain health from gods with higher health pools. It goes without saying, any mobile carries can be most alive by the Great Devourer. Playing into Bakasura, however, is all about interrupting that sustainable onslaught of damage. Hebo can chuck Bakasura up and then ult him and he just vanishes. Kali can ult to survive the mow down and then just turn the fight on her favour. 
uh, Kuzumbo with his inbuilt reflection, and if you buy Thorns, it can be a tough time for you. Luckily, the removal of Naming Lion's old passive means that you don't have to worry about that so much. Also, slows can really tamper with your ability to run people down, so be aware of gods that have them in the kit. In terms of building, to counter back a Sora, pick up items that stem the onslaught. Mid Guardian Mail, Shield of Thorns, as already mentioned, and mitigations on items such as Spirit Robes and Omi Hunter's Guard will really slow the damage he can deal. Uh, another choice is Mantle of Discord, as you can put a second stun between yourself and the back server that's attacking you. One final important counterplay point is take yourself out of the fight. Things like Mewar Roll, Aegis, Freya Roll will take you away and Regurgitate. Regurgitate is still in the last 5 seconds, so if you Mewar Roll up and then come back down, you've missed a good portion of that additional auto attack span. Um, so bear that in mind when, when Baxter rolls you. So that is the end of my second Diamond God Guide. Uh, obviously this will be covered by Baxura. Thank you for watching. And I know Baxura is a little bit easier, so it probably doesn't appeal to the higher end players. But it's, good. it's a good god to pick up if you're learning the jungle role, because you don't have to worry about complex ability combinations. You just have to worry about survival and mowing enemies down. It's a lot of fun, he's versatile, and he's definitely worth a go. Um, don't forget to leave a comment if you think I've missed anything out, or if you want to suggest what god you want to see next in the series. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.